We have a new model from Best Tech, the designer is James Arnold from Horizon Machine Works, and boy does it have a, a wicked blade. It kind of reminds me of the Hogue Deca quite a bit. Now they're calling this blade shape, that's in Magna Cut Steel by the way, and recently they've been heat treating it between 63 and 64, really happy to see that. Um, which I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Now, this is up for pre-order right now, uh, so I will have everything linked down in the description. But anyways, so I think it should be launched by, by August 30th or something. The blade shape, they say is a modified Tonto harpoon. I personally would call it a harpoon sheep's foot Tonto or a harpoon Tonto Warncliffe, even better. Because of this straight edge right here being just like a Warncliffe, like even um, these guys call theirs a Warncliffe. I believe they call theirs a Warncliffe. So you see how you have a straight edge right here, making it so that you can go flat down on a surface without hitting your fingers. See how I can go right down on a surface and I'm not hitting my fingers right here. So that makes it to, for utility cuts are amazing. Also, when you're cutting, the we'll talk about the ergos and everything, you can generate a lot of force up here in this area, all the way up to the tip. So knives with belly tend to slip out of cuts. You tend to lose um, pressure in you know different areas um, of the blade. With this, because it's a straight edge, you actually are getting the same amount of pressure here as you do here. So that's why you can cut all the way out to the tip perfectly fine. So you can take advantage of this by running, say if you're running down cardboard or whatever. Now you also have this section right here that you can take advantage of. However, for me, I would tend to slice down and as soon as I hit this belly, I would turn it and kind of hawk, hawk bill it down the um, whatever I'm cutting. Just depends on what you're cutting, which edge and which blade you'd want to use. But you can see this harpoon, almost like a sheep's foot or Warncliffe, with a what looks like a blasted finish. You can see the magnet cut steel there and uh, what is it? Uh, Horizon Machine Works' logo. Titanium frame lock, titanium backspacer, and a titanium milled pocket clip. Love these thumb studs. Uh, very, very well placed, great textured thumb studs. It does come in a couple different uh, options right here. You can see it. You can see the size length and all of that good stuff. Now, the um, the thumb studs, like I said, man, play so well, man. I love the positioning of the thumb studs, how far away, even though they put this chamfer there, it doesn't, it's not even necessary because of the distance. I like that they did it. So I love that they did put that little extra, but the reverse flick, thumb flick is just phenomenal on this knife because of the distance away. Anytime you get thumb studs that are really tight to the scales, it has to be chamfered just right and everything. In this case, it's perfect. Then you have a front flipper. Now, while I can use the front flipper, not a problem at all. I do wish the jimping was sharper. It's somewhat of slippery jimp. Well, not slippery, but it's not super sharp. And they did not go up and around the corner. Always, 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 any designer out there that's doing a front flipper, whether you're a designer or a knife company, always go up and around. You have this little corner right there, right? There's no texturing there. How am I supposed to, how's it supposed to grip me without me going all the way up here? So you want to be able to grip it right there. So you want texturing right here and right here. Like I said, it still works just fine. But, you know, I personally would prefer that. I do see that that is where the stop pin hits is right there on top of there but still you could have put jimping up to there uh frame lock nice engagement rock solid lock up nice strong lock up good access to the lock bar even though they didn't knock it back it's chamfered really nice so it's a very comfortable disengagement yeah very comfortable very smooth on the drop and so, since there's so much blade hanging out you can easily reverse flick off of the blade lefties um you know, it's not a lefty friendly knife. Obviously you could do it just fine, um, especially off of the thumb stud with the thumb. Reverse flick, you're gonna have to kick your thumb down a little low, but it's not really set up for lefties. Um, the ergonomics, it's a very slim handle in this direction, but it's plenty wide. So it's thick, 
yet slim and it has this little spot right there but that does not bother my fingers at all my hands actually fit this handle extremely well i i think it was well thought out i love how it tapers down right here right at the heel gives you a little transition right there which does make even if i go down all the way to palm down there it's very comfortable but another thing is if i needed to turn it around and cut a strap or a rope which this arc right here does kind of make that a little tough but i bet i could trap a rope and get it you'd be just fine gas station knife fighting grip is going to be great whether it's in the reverse or forward grip um so yeah the ergonomics are, are really really well done uh, i would say the balance between the blade and the, the ergos is actually extremely well thought out um you get you can get nice and tight to that edge you know, and you know even for utility cuts you can good detailing work so well done on the designer uh, making sure that the handle complemented the blade very nicely. I see that all the time being messed up where the handle does not complement the blade at all and it just makes for awkward use. Um, I love a good harpoon. The geometry is pretty thin. I mean, I would say it's plenty slicey. I would not um, call this thick at all. Very slicey, nice broad blade. Um, as far as nitpicks and negatives, I do have a couple. One in particular, you guys already know it. You guys are probably screaming it at the screen. Sharpen and tone plunge grind. Yes, sir. They tapered the plunge grind to the edge. This should not be tapered to the edge. It should be tapered, or it should just dramatically stop. You don't want a choil. Let me see if I have a knife nearby. I don't. Um, you want the plunge grind to be away from the edge. I've shown this a million times. I don't have to show it again, but I do show it all the time uh, because it seems like 80% of knives are not doing good plunge grinds. But when I go to sharpen this, and we're going to talk about sharpening this and honing this and, and wh what about it. But when I go to sharpen it, it will create a smile back there. No matter what, when I go to sharpen it, we'll pull out this little pocket sharpener. I'm also going to pull out this one here in a second. But when I go to sharpen it, so let's pretend this is a, a diamond stone. This is the diamond stone. This is a ceramic, but let's pretend this is a diamond just so I don't scratch the blade. When I go up here, right there, I am hitting the plunge grind now. So now it's going to cut into here and make a smile. You want to make sure there's a distance away from this thickness and this thickness. You want a distance away from that. Now, as far as stropping and honing, first off, really quick, with stropping, you can do it all in one swoop, but what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find your angle, go across, and then take this secondary tip, run it all the way to the other side of the, the, the strop, just like that, and then drop your elbow and finish the blade off. Because this is going to be two different spots here and here, and we'll talk about sharpening here in one second. So as you're stropping it, strop all the way to that, to right there, to this, corner hits that corner then drop your elbow and get the rest of this angle on a big strop like this you want to start obviously the tip find your angle and then as you're dragging it back once this tip gets to the uh, leather strop run it back just a little bit farther then drop your elbow to get this section so you're just getting each section at one time but once you get to the back of this section you're done with it because you hit the entire edge. Now you need to get the, the other edge. Same thing on the reverse. Or you can literally just do it in two sections. Now you can technically just get it in one failed swoop like that without a problem, most likely. But depending on how much you want to make sure your tip is very acute will depend on how much you, you want to do that. Because if we're going to hone it, you know, honing it's not as big of a deal. You just got to do it two different spots. One, then pick it up. Two, one. And you could technically go all the way across like that. I do that with my DECA, and I'll show you what's happening. So I do that with the DECA, but you notice how it's kind of rounding right here, and it's not like a, just a straight point right here, which is fine. That's what I wanted for this. I, this point does nothing for me. And I imagine this point right here is not going to do nothing for you either. So you could technically do it in one fail swoop if you want. But, but if you really want to make sure this tip stays very pronounced, what I would say is sharpen it in sections. So what I would do is I would sharpen it like this, where I sharpen this edge, 
separate from this edge. So I would sharpen this side. I would work on this side just like this, going back and forth, or even just forward passes like this. Then I would switch to this side and I would do them separately. Same thing on this side. I would work on the first part, then work on this part, making sure that I never allow the tip to move. If I start working on this section too much and I start watching this tip move this way, well then I need to hurry up and get to this side and do this side because you need to make sure you don't do one side or one portion too much because otherwise you'll move this tip. As long as you do it an equal amount, you'll be just fine. But it's honestly, I know it sounds tough, but it's really not a hard blade shape to sharpen. It's actually very easy. So a couple more negatives. One is the, the jimping up here. Wrap it all the way around, at least bring it up here to the stop pin. And my next negative is, or at least make it sharper and make sure you put it on this edge. But that stop pin placement, look at where it stops on the close. Right behind the edge. It's not a good place. That's, that means when I sharpen this, I'm going to be worried. It's hitting literally right here. You can actually see where it kind of hits. Actually, you can see it right there. See that little shaded, shaded line right there? That is where it hits. That's the steel I have to remove to sharpen the damn knife. <laughs> so when I'm sharpening, let's say I sharpen it up, you know, like that much steel you know, in the next two years. Well, that means that's that steel. So not saying you can't avoid it, but you would have to try your best to not sharpen back to here. You'd have to try to sharpen up the blade and try to sharpen forward of the back of the edge. So why put it, why put the edge this close then? Because when I sharpen back to here, that's literally where the stop pin lands. So it doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, that's thicker steel right here. So Trust me, I understand it would be a lot to remove this steel right here opposed to this steel. This steel will come off a lot easier than this steel will. So it might even start to recurve up a little bit, but all those things become issues. Plunge grind issue, stop pin issue, all becomes an issue. The plunge grind can make it where it starts recurving right there. Luckily it's a straight edge. So you're gonna, you know, basically, um, you know, try to probably do it like this where it's like almost like forward and back but even if you it's just it's it's not a it's not a good place um for well it's not good to have the plunge grind right there and it's not good for the stop pin to also land right there so it just makes it difficult i can't put a choil in um i can't put my own sharpening notch in because otherwise i will I can't, I won't be able to close it because that's where I would put my sharp and and plunger and is right there. Maybe I could maybe dremel something right here in front of this section and leave this alone. But, uh, but yeah, that, that would be, you know, a little bit uh, frustrating to have to do, especially for an expensive premium knife. You hope these little details are just taken care of. You don't mind this so much on a cheap budget knife that, you know, you're going to sharpen a bunch and toss. Granted, most people aren't going to be probably sharpening this thing that much in a couple years. Most people are probably just going to rock the factory edge, maybe sharpen it once, maybe twice, which they absolutely could do. Uh, but that doesn't mean you don't want the ability, right? You want the ability ability to sharpen your edges and be able to remove steel you know at least like a quarter inch of steel off the knife you want to be able to remove if you're not really good at sharpening but learn how to sharpen uh titanium mill pot clip does land right around that section i didn't find it being an issue going in and out of the pocket of what i tried it in but i have not carried it long term yet to know how it works in all my pants and everything else so far it's been fine the tension's actually not as bad as you'd think you would think it actually gets nice and slim right there as far as the thickness of the titanium so that's probably why it's not overly tensioned uh but Hopefully it doesn't bother me in super thick jeans. Either way, like I said, I, I think this thing's pretty cool. I actually like this thing quite a bit. Lots of milling on the inside, heavy milling on the inside. Very cool. Um, super smooth and it's just breaking in. So you can imagine after a couple weeks or even a couple months uh, of use, this thing's gonna be super smooth. Anyways, um, I think it's pretty damn dope. So there you guys go. The best tech classic. I will have everything linked down in the description. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.